you every day because you have experiences that relate to these 14 points every day. It's uh, Kobina Bantu Shingo with the African People's Social Party. I know I'm normally in Zenzele, but due to inclement weather, uh, I'm not in Zenzele today. Uh, but next week we will be, uh, weather permit. And I'm really looking forward to this political education and uh, glad that everybody is on. And uh, today we're gonna be discuss we're gonna be discussing uh, point number twelve of the 14 point platform of the African People's Socialist Party. So uh, I'm looking forward to the discussion, looking forward to uh, really digging deep and, and dealing with some of the fundamental questions that we uh, face with today in today's society and what it's gonna take to overturn these contradictions. So I'm really looking forward to it and uh, uh, looking forward to the comrades on the call really engaging uh, in, the, in the discussion. So we're gonna move um, forward to, to get right into it. I think we got everybody here that uh, have been on the call before. So we know, we know uh, as they say, the repeat offenders of, of uh, colonialism. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to the discussion. So. If we can go ahead and pull point number 12 up on the screen and uh, and then we'll get we'll get right into it. And we know we other people gonna be coming into the call too, as well as people participating on Facebook. Um any volunteers to read point number 12. Go ahead, I'll read. I'll read. Go ahead. Point 12, we want an end to the vicious self-serving U.S. and Western European political, economic, military interference in the affairs of African and African people throughout the world. We believe that African people in Africa elsewhere have a right and responsibility to solve our own problem, free from the unwanted and the self-serving interference of U.S. and Western imperialists. We believe that the U.S. and Western imperialist interference in the affairs of our people is designed to maintain the continuation of theft of our human and material resources and our oppression and impoverishment. We believe the African people must be free to organize and struggle for the end to colonialism, neo-colonialism, without the interference from the U.S. and Western imperialist imperialism, which supports neo-colonialism, colonialism in Africa. The U.S. and elsewhere, and which the deep deposes progressive and revolutionary African leaders and replaces them with neo-colonial stooges. Oh, appreciate that, comrade Indu. Mm -hmm. And uh, before we go to the main points, does anybody have any questions or any contributions that they think will help? Uh, the audience be able to understand this point and uh, to deepen anything that we see that may need uh, further clarity. Okay, that's what's up. I like, I think everybody feel that it's, um, that it's straightforward. I do want to point out a couple of things you know, just to talk about, you know, uh, you know, some things that that's in this point. We talk about neo-colonialism and colonialism, 
And as we discuss probably every week, you know, that the real contradiction that we face with is that we colonize uh, and, and colonialism is the, uh, you know, when a foreign uh, government, you know, takes over your land, takes over your resources uh, and, 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 and use it for their own interests. And neocolonialism is basically like white power in black face where somebody that may look like you, talk like you, dress like you from the same culture and ethnicity as you, you know, may work on, in the best interest of, of the colonizer to oppress you to, to get your resources. And so uh, as Malcolm was said, they, they will be uh, a house niggas, you know what I'm saying? And, and so, you know, we wanna just make, th make that point clear because, uh, you know, uh, we want to want people to really understand what neo-colonialism is and colonialism is. And if you understand that you fight colonialism, you don't get caught up into the subjective uh, struggle that they try to make uh, make you fight for, which is fighting against racism or something like that. You know, uh, you fight for colonialism to overturn the system that oppresses you, not to get people to like you or not like you. You know, so we want to make sure that that people understand understand what that is. All right, any other input before we move to the main points? Who uh -huh. So let's go to the main points. Uh, Comrade Dexter. All right. So the main points here of this point is one, African people around the world have a right and responsibility to solve our own problems without the interference from US and Western imperialists to imperialist interference into the African, I mean, to the affairs of African people is designed to maintain the continuation of the theft of our human and material resources and maintain our oppression. Three, we have a right to be free to organize and struggle for an end to colonialism and neocolonialism without imperialist intervention. And four, the US has overturned revolutionary African leaders and replaced them with neocolonialists. So we want to open it up and see, you know, uh, what people think about those main points and, and if they got that from the main point and if they have anything. Uh, in addition to that, and comrade uh, Dexter, if we can, when we when we discuss in the main point, when we have a discussion, can you um, well, stop sharing. stop sharing the screen, and then when we start back up, we'll start sharing again. Yeah. Or. Or. So Dexter, did you have anything around the main points of what they said? Uh -huh. Um, um, no, nah, just to, to kind of piggyback off what you said, um, I think this point really just kind of uh emphasizes how you know how we how we say that um, you know, imperialism is not when we talk about African history or black history, we talk about um imperialism, colonialism as an as an interruption of, of our history. So I think this point really really acknowledges that. You know, it acknowledges that the situation that we're confronted with today is a direct result of the uh, the influence or uh, interference of uh, you know U.S. imperialism. So, yeah, ninety nine was the point. Oh, Comrade Riverside, did you have anything? Oh, um, oh. I just got my head head together. No, not yet. I just kind of got in late. I'm self critical. But I do unite with all of the points. For sure that. <laughs> oh, that's what's up, Karan. <laughs> oh. Let's see. Queen Mother Moore, did you have anything? I might say Queen Mother Moore, Queen, Queen Mother Kaseba. <laughs> but Queen Mother Moore was a powerful sister. <laughs> you're on mute if you're talking. 
It's like you froze. Okay, go ahead now. What do you say? I said, did you have anything about those main points? Well, I understand all of them. You know, we we all got to uh, we, we 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 can't have you U.S. doing nothing for us. We can't have the colonized them. We got to do for our own self. We got to sit here and try to get our own nation and get our own freedom back by any means necessary. That's what we got to do. Right on, right on. That is, that is, and I and I want to, and I think I mean that's right on, and and. You know, something that we we have to be clear on because it can get lost, you know, because, you know, when they, you know, do a push to merely vote or do a push to uh, participate in a process, you know, uh, it, it it renders us, you know, uh, or, or win us back to the embrace of the colonizers as opposed to, you know, like like Queen uh, Mother Kashiba just said, like uh, we have to do for ourselves. We have to be able to uh, uh, get our own government and understand that this government would never have an interest in trying to uh, liberate us or stop stealing from us. Because they even get to a point where that the discussion becomes something similar to trying to uh, trying to say that was way back then. You know, as if they're not doing it right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> As if they're not colonizing us right now, you know. They, and even though they, even though they don't want us to forget their history, they'll tell us that our history is so far in the past that that's something that we shouldn't even talk about. But actively, they are still in African resources right now. You know what I'm saying? Um, and so we have to be clear on that because if not, we would we would forget that and 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 merely deal with the the fact that. Uh, you know, we trying to integrate or trying to become, have certain positions in their society, but their society doesn't work in our best interest. So, you know, we got to be clear on these things and why we fight for colonialism as opposed to racism and why we say that we have to do for ourselves as opposed to them being able to uh, uh, determine or, or set uh, what, what our future holds. Can't nobody do that uh, but us. If there's, if there's nothing else, we're going to move to the first question. We can pull it. Yeah, there we go. And comrades, this is exciting because this is the first, this is the first study of the year of 2022. You know what I mean? So this, this is, this is a dynamic, dynamic process. All right, so uh, the first question I'm gonna throw it to Kundai, the US and Western interference in the affairs of African people is designed to provide humanity, humanitarian aid to Africa, maintain a theft and oppression of uh, an impoverishment of African people, promote democracy and free enterprise or all the above. Oh, there you go. Oh, um, oh B. <laughs> Maintain the theft, oppression, and impoverishment of African people. Um, and we know it's not A. This was going to be um, my comment initially for the, um, the main points, but I figured it was a question that was going to be geared towards it. But... Um, <clears throat> Um, okay, it's not A and uh, because A supports like the ideology or the, the, like the line that they try to push around um, uh, like the UN or even like how we see like just directly like the US military um, uh, as some sort of like humanitarian aid to African people. But um, but we know that in the who movement, real humanitarian aid to African people comes from Project Black Hunk, um, and uh, not from like the UN and U.S. military or other um, uh, or you know any of their um, 
uh, NGOs or like other um, nonprofit organizations or like the Red Cross, they never serve African people. And we've seen that time, after, like you can just go on YouTube and look at videos. Um, like we always say, you don't have to take our word for it. And just look at videos of how these organizations function in Africa. And even sometimes where it looks like they may be doing good work where they may be feeding poor African children or um, trying to combat Ebola or you know whatever disease or something they're saying that they dare in the name of but um uh but if it was really you know in in our best interest um as African people all the all the diseases would be eradicated um it wouldn't be no more hungry people in Africa but we see that um that that still exists so it really can't be solving the problem and then um uh, we know it's not C because um because hell, we don't even have like, I mean, promote democracy and free enterprise ain't nothing free under capitalism. And the highest form of, democ of democracy is socialism. So we know that 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 can't it's not even possible under capitalism for for them to come into somewhere else and try to um, bring some sort of democracy in which is a lot of times what they say these wars are for or why they doing these blockades or why they doing this or that is because they trying to help but um, help from, from the US is always like on its own terms, it's never really help. It's like their way of just being able to come in and finesse the people and say, you know, that it's because they try to bring democracy and look at how their leaders treat their people, but look at how they treat black people right here in the US and they wanna go somewhere else and help other black people. Like it don't even make sense. So, and then obviously it can't be deep. Oh, right on, comrade. I appreciate the way you broke that down, and I think that's right on. Comrade Riverside. Oh, I did want to speak on this. I don't know where I think it, but it was on Facebook somewhere. It was a story I had heard where they were talking about it was a KFC in Africa. First of all, I know I ain't no African to ask the KFC, because why would we do that? But anyway, it was KFC in Africa. They were talking about they had a shortage on potatoes or whatever. And they were saying that it was local farmers there, like Africans who were growing potatoes. And was like, we've been had lots of potatoes. We've been told y'all we had lots of potatoes. And y'all not buying them. And when people was asking why, KFC was talking about it was some kind of like global federation that monitors health standards. Blah, 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 they did, right? And the person, oh, it was a TikTok video. Anyway, the person was like, you know what I'm saying? Like that, that's, that's logistical nonsense. Like the type of stuff that they say to justify why they not trying to enrich our lives? They don't want us to make no money. You know what I'm saying? Like there's plenty of potato farmers out there, but they don't buy their potatoes from the potato farmers there. They buy their potatoes from wherever capitalism and colonialism tell them to and make excuses as to why they can't. Everybody has to eat, eat the potatoes they grow out there. So don't tell me nothing about how they don't qualify with safety guidelines, nor are you actually trying to tell them like, hey, this is how you get the certification so we can buy the potatoes. So y'all don't want to buy them potatoes. And so, you know, I unite with what Kundai said, because that's an example of that type of stuff right there. Oh, yeah, that's right on. That's right on. Yeah, I, I appreciate that that example as well, you know, because they this is this is why it's so important, why the Burnersburg newspaper is so important, because we have to put out our own narrative. That's why African internationalism is so important, because if, if they which they want to have a colonialism want to have a monopoly on defining our reality and a monopoly on violence just in case you don't go along with what they're talking about they can kill you and call you a terrorist but you know just the example that was given an explanation that uh, kundai gave and and then the, the example that uh comrade riverside gave you know it shows that we can't go by their narrative their narrative only feeds their interest so when, when we talk about like uh, the the there's a, a potato shortage. There's a potato shortage. Well, you know what I'm saying. Like we're not experiencing that. So even when even when imperialism in crisis, we got to be able to control our own narrative because imperialism crisis is not African people crisis. You know what I'm saying. That that that's a whole. We've been in crisis since we've been colonized. You know what I mean. So when they experiencing a crisis, we've been they they four five hundred years late because they they actually introduced our crisis to us. You know what I'm saying? So if they're in crisis, that means that we have opportunity to be able to uh, advance the revolution and, 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 and gain our liberation. So I appreciate those examples and, and, and 
and explanation. Uh, anybody else on this point before we move uh, before we move the, the, the discussion? Are you saying something, Queen Queen uh, Queen Mother Kashiba? I like you freezing a little bit for some reason. If you come in, then I will we'll, we'll pause and let you say say what you have. To say. Okay, now you now you now you now you look good. Were you saying something? No, I'm, I was listening to the. You no, know, I agree with the two, other two sisters what they said. Okay, right on, right on. All right, so we're gonna move to point question number two, and um, this question we're gonna we're gonna give it to Yindu. Yindu, it says, who has the right and responsibility to solve our problems? The U.S. government, China, <laughs> Bono, and Angelina Jolie. African or the African people. You know, that's that's pretty easy. It's African people. All the other people that contribute to our problem, you know, they're not gonna solve them, you know. So it's only the only one else, and that's African people. Oh, so what 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 would you say to, to people that say, well, you know, Angelina Jolie going and adopting African babies from Africa and, and, and giving them a better way of living? So I she, would say I, well, the only thing I would say, you know, is just a, 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 a new way of saying kidnapping. And, uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that's the meaning. Right that's all the meaning. <laughs> right you on. Know. Right on. Right on. Yeah. And, and, and this is another great point and why we got to control our own narrative. Because yeah. they'll kidnap you and say it's adoption. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> they're, they're, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, and, and if the parents wanna, want the child back, you know, they'll, they'll say that they... That the parents are illegal, <laughs> illegal aliens or something. You know, they <laughs> want their children back, you know. Yeah, and, uh, right. and I don't know if y'all, yeah, you remember, you remember a few years ago, it might have been 15, 20 years ago now, but the little kid from Cuba, uh, Elian Gonzalez. Oh, and, yeah, uh, man. He's a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And they, they say, so what, it? For, uh, what is it? Elian Gonzalez, it was some years ago. And, uh, Y'all remember that? I know some people probably remember that, but yeah, I remember, you remember that Hindu? Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it was Danny, you know, Danny and Miami and all that stuff. I know it was easy to remember because they, you know, they were gonna take they well, they took him, <laughs> you know, for a while, you know, to let her, end up having to give him up, but they took him, you know, make a, and they'll take, you know, that's that that's they what they do. They tell and say, you know, say, oh, we're gonna give you a better home, you know, yeah. Better home to work in, I reckon, for them, whatever, I really want to put it, but it's still, you know, but still kidnapping. You can yeah. call it what you want. Them. Yeah. Yeah, they, they, they had, they had, it was some people that had came, I think, uh, they had came to the U.S. Uh, from Cuba, and Elian Gonzalez was one of the, he was like maybe 10 or 11, if I ain't mistaken. Yeah. And, uh, and so, but his father mm -hmm. was, was in Cuba. And he was saying he wanted his child, he wanted his child back. But they was mm. trying to say that his father didn't have no rights uh, to the child because because yeah. he wasn't legalized in America, and the child had a legal right to be in America. <laughs> and he's like, "What?" You know. And the child was saying, and, it, and he was saying he wanted to go back home to his yeah. dad. So I mean, it was a crazy situation, but it just it shows. Was crazy. Yeah, yeah, it just shows that they set the terms and define. You know, they try to define your reality, even if what you're looking at don't make sense, you know, uh, yeah. and that's no no different than what we see, you know, every day, you know, like when they kill us in the street, you know, and they define yeah. and say that we are responsible for being shot, you know, and uh, and, and even like I think it was Eric Garner, who they choked to death, and the person yeah. that went to jail was the guy that videotaped the damn uh, uh, scene. Yeah. And they tried yeah. to say that he committed a crime and now they got in some states they got laws to say that uh, if a police officer kills somebody, you know, and 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 somebody and 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 the person and the person that survived was with them, that they're responsible for the for the uh, for the killing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it makes no sense how they define 
certain things. And that's why we have to be able to, you know, uh, harness the power necessary for us to define our own reality and even be able to say that this is unjust and this is, you know, for a lack of a better word, ludicrous. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't make sense, you know, how they how they move in certain ways and there's no yeah. way to justify it. And, and we have to we have to overturn that and say we have the power to define what's right and what's wrong. And we clear that uh that this is this is unjust. It's yeah, like you always, said, have, really, to, like, always have to remember that slavery was the law one time, you know. It was the law, you know, you don't work, you know. That's real talk. You know, yep, yeah, so that's what yeah. they say. Yeah. And 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 that's something that's something you gotta look at. Like if if slavery is illegal, I mean if slavery is legal, you want to not be a slave is legal. That's illegal, you know what I'm saying? That's illegal. Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah, what, what does that mean? You know what I'm saying? Do you do you then say that I don't resist because, because it's law that, that I'm a slave? Mm -hmm. And but Africans have to realize we got to realize this too now. Because if I don't care who you is, you know, like if you if you whipping my ass, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I don't I shouldn't I should respect. The fact that you the that you the police, if you beat me up, you know what I'm saying. Like if you if you trying to kill me, do I do I surrender my life to you because you supposed to have some authority? And I'm saying no, 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 nah, it, it shouldn't work like that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And 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 you know we have to be able to define these things for ourselves and take power to define you know uh, what's happening to us in this world. And that's what African internationalism does. <laughs> Anybody else on this on this question or this point? Uh, yeah, I just wanted to unite with everything that was said, um, you know, just speaking to this whole thing as far as uh, controlling the narrative and, and waging the war of ideas, what you said just kind of brought to mind. I remember this conversation I had with a cousin of mine years ago, who the, she's a teacher in Trinidad, and um, she told me that, you know, they had gotten their textbooks for the year, and she was going through it. She was reading um, a, a period where they were talking about, like, slavery, and um, she noticed that they didn't one time use the word slavery to, to describe, you know, what, how, what Africans had experienced. They kept using the word uh, workers. You know, workers were taken here and workers were put here to work. And, you know, that goes back to this whole thing of, you know, the war of ideas and, and these institutions that control these ideas that we end up, you know, just taking on and accepting as fact in, in our own history. So, yeah, I, I unite. This is a question of controlling our own narrative. But yeah, the, 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 yeah, you're on mute, you're on mute, comrade. But yeah, the word slavery was not there. Workers, workers, workers. Yeah, that's right. That's right on. That, that, that's 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 crazy, man. Because like you said, this this is a war of ideas, and this is why we got to control a lot on that. And again, why the burning spear in African internationalism is so <laughs> significant. You know what I'm saying? And I remember, I, I remember being a junior in high school, and and getting sent to the office because I couldn't unite with a white teacher in an all black school telling me that slavery, that the, that the slave master didn't treat the slaves too bad because, because something like we, because, you know, people take care of their own property. <laughs> I, can say, I can say that conversation didn't go too good. And at the time I ain't know nothing. I just, I just knew that wasn't right. You know what I mean? That wasn't right. Mm -hmm. So I was I was sent to the office and and, and sent to the house that day. Yeah, but I, I, I you know anybody else on this point? It sounds like you about to say something you do. <laughs> like you, what you're saying it's kind of like you know they, they keep putting put all in the tank, but they still use you know they still keep it fair you know <laughs> slave master too yeah. is great. You know what I mean. Well, you know, you need to understand how but black people must be off the mind and don't know what a slave is or something. Yeah. They know what it is, yeah. they don't want to say what it is, put it like that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yo, speaking of like, you know, speaking of schools, like think about um the narrative that we take that we um kind of perpetuating when we're just saying a pledge of allegiance every morning at school. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I mean, you know, just going yeah. back, I remember one time, you know, way after I was in, you know, elementary school, I remember looking at actually sitting and reading the lyrics. I was a little kid. I don't remember yeah. really analyzing. I just kind of parroted the words, you know, but going back and reading it and, and you know, you see into really justifying the genocide of indigenous people, you know, you're justifying the enslavement of African people, you know, you're telling this a uh, really romanticized uh, version and it's all from the perspective of white power, from the 
perspective of the colonizer, and we're there just and being indoctrinated in that every single morning uh, in school. So again, you know, just this whole question of the narrative and the war of ideas, and you know, who controls that narrative? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's real. That's real. I know Saeed was about to say something too. Hello, everyone. I'm so grateful for being late. I had a, a prior meeting before this, but I was just going to, um, when you said that, uh, Kobe, about what happened, your experience in school, there was a Republican Black um, puppet who, uh, who's Republican, who actually gave a, a, a um, I think it's like maybe three months ago, he gave a, a um, interview where he was saying, I forget this, this dude's name, but he was saying that he believes that reparations are due to the slaveholder did y'all hear that that was just like what he's That's like because, because it because he's not he's he's acknowledging that we were property which is true we were property but he's saying because property was taken from them that the <laughs> government owes the slave owners reparations so this is like y'all just got this all twisted <laughs> completely like how you know like it's it, it goes against the uh the, the son of sam law you can't benefit off of somebody who you kill. You can't benefit off of a crime that you committed. You know, that's the, you know, that's the law of this land, but you're going to sit there and say that because we were property and they took the property and they and they took away their assets that the government needs to replenish that. But yet there's no conversation about stolen labor, stolen people and stuff. So I just wanted to bring that point up. You must, you that's why you can't fix it. this system. You can't fix capitalism. Because under capitalism, exactly. that makes perfectly good sense under capitalism. But we all know in our right minds, that's backwards as hell. And so yeah. that's why it can't. we can't just be okay with making reforms or even trying to convince people, trying to, I mean, what's the point of changing somebody's like that mind? Like, what you gonna get out of that? You know, and you're gonna be, you're like, you're gonna be bashing your head up against the wall trying to change somebody like that you know what I mean and that's and that's the thinking whether it's you know that far-fetched not of 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 anybody that supports capitalism like that's how backwards the shit is like you can't yeah. it's no correcting that you can't like it's no redeeming yeah. that you yeah. kind of remind yeah. me of France you know uh, uh you must be a Frenchman you know like in when the, the Haitians uh during the Haitian revolution and they broke yep. you know they broke and defeated the French and everything but the French say they owed them because they were slave you know it's okay. you know <laughs> they come up with all kind of crazy but that's that's yeah. the same kind of mentality with that guy was talking about same thing yeah, yeah. I, I put you in slave but you owe me because you broke you ran away or whatever I beat my up and ran me away you know yeah it's crazy you can't that's, that's real <laughs> tough and that that's 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 the first thing I thought about when she said when Sai said that and you do was was the Haitian Revolution, you know what I'm saying? France and the U.S. forced Haiti to pay reparations to the slave master, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, you know, but for me, that really, like uh, Kundai was saying, uh, that that shows that there's no, there's nothing redeemable about this system, you know what I'm saying? And and the reality is that uh, if you allow them to have, it's like who who gives them the power to to define this stuff, you know what I'm saying? Who gives them the power to say what's right and what's wrong? Who gives them the power to justify anything that they're doing? You know what I'm saying? Who gave them the power to, to, to kidnap us and bring us here? You know, who gave them the power to do that? You know what I'm saying? And and, and they gave themselves the power. They 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 said that they uh, ordained themselves to do this out here in the world. You know what I'm saying? That we have to do the same thing. We have to take the power amongst ourselves and, and, and say that we uh, are gonna have the power to stop it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and we have to do that because if you allow them to start defining or negotiating where you supposed to stand and stuff like that, you know, you, you'll be in bondage, you know what I mean? And so, yeah, so that, that's, that's a good point. Yeah, Carabo, uh, Comrade, you, did you wanna say anything to this point? I think that's, a, I don't know if I'm pronouncing your name right or not. Comrade Carabo. Uh -huh. All right, so we're gonna move to the next question. If you if you say something, Comrade, you're on mute. But if you get off on mute, we'll pause and, and, and hear what you had to say. So we're gonna go to the next question. Yeah, this 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 is good discussion, comrade. So, how has uh, 
Western imperialism responded to revolutionary African leaders historically. Um, we're gonna say Queen Mother Kashiba, A by the uh, deposing them and replacing them with neo-colonial stooges by supporting them with funds and weapons, uh, see through an isolationist position, not intervening at uh, at all, all the above. I'm not gonna say all the above because uh, they they not doing nothing for them. West the westerns they they they're taking everything from them. They're not doing nothing. So that's a whole question asked. So you got to help me out with that one. But it don't seem like to me they're doing nothing for them. Period. Right, right. So somebody, uh, let's see who else on here. Uh, Saeed, what you think? What, 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 uh, Queen Mother Moore, she said she wants us to help us out with that one. I would say that, um, it would be, um, A, by disposing them and replacing them with neo-colonial stooges. You want, you want to tell us why? <laughs> I can. Um, I'll, I'll give an example. I'll give an example. Um, if you look at the, I mean, this, you just look at the, how the, as the Black Power Movement, was you know, pretty much abolished because of um, infiltration. You know, so they really made a consorted effort to make sure they have like politicians and people to that that they say should be our leaders. So one example would be Obama. Um, that um, that you know that they felt like you know you hear a lot of you know African folk, folks say that we are that during that time that we arrived. They had this expectation that he would change our circumstances, and and all he is is a is a puppet for the establishment because Republican and Democratic parties represent a capitalistic colonial um, entity. So anything that they do is going to be elevating that. And, 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 and the more they elevate that, the more they, they keep us oppressed. So they want to make sure, but they, they will say that, you know, uh, Kamala, Kamala Harris and uh, Obama and all these different black figures or even in the African continent where they have pillaged completely, but they, they, they put in power these uh, stooges, these neocolonial stooges, that they become prime ministers, they become you know, heads of state, and they push the agenda of capitalism and colonialism. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's right on. That's right on. I appreciate that. Any anybody else? Uh -huh. Yeah, I can uh -huh. um, uh, piggyback off of that. Um, I unite with uh, what Comrade Saeed said um, 100%. And um, I mean, really, if we look at the whole continent of Africa is nothing but all the presidents and all the prime ministers is nothing but neo-colonialists. Because what government in Africa, in any country in Africa, works in the interest of poor working class African people? None of them. Someone's telling me. Maybe somebody can answer this. That's, this is if they had supported the African revolutionary leaders um, with, um, huh? You're breaking up a little bit, Kundai. Well, can you hear me now? I yeah. can hear you now, yeah. Oh, I was saying if they supported us with, um, if they funded African revolutionaries and provided weapons, we, we'd be a free people right now. We would have, you know, overtook the whole thing. And then, um, and we know it's not isolation because that's what this point in the platform is talking about that the US and, you know, like Western military all is always, and, and, and government is always intervening on, you know, anytime we have any semblance of freedom or any leaders and, and, and even not just in Africa, but we look at um, places that, you know, try to, um, you know, try to build like a socialist economy, like try to, you know, uh, practice socialism, like in places like Venezuela and in Cuba, you know, places like that where they, you know, intervene in a way where they kill the leaders and then put in place and say, no, actually, here's your president. This is going to be um, y'all leader because they support um, the the mission or, you know, whatever it, that the U.S. has trying to, uh, whatever the U.S. is trying to win from or take from that area so they put they try to put in their own leaders there the u.s try to put in their own leaders instead of just leaving it alone and letting the people solve their own problems they always trying to intervene and like 
Um, I remember one of the first teas that I did um, during my sponsorship in the party with with Covina was um, was around the Sandinistas. I meant to ask you because somebody asked me about uh, that document. I, I can never remember the name of it, um, but uh, um, anyway, it's gonna bother me. But uh, uh, one of the I can't remember who it was, which leader it was in, in a documentary. But it was saying that like whoever the U.S. president was at the time kept saying that they was trying to help Venezuela, like this, like they want to help and you know they trying to do, uh, trying to put in different type of um, programs there or something. And they were saying we don't want your help because your help always result in like all type of violence and poverty. We don't we don't want your help. And so it's never that they just leave somewhere alone and let the people figure it out and, and you know come up with their own problems. They always try to intervene in a way that they call help, which is really just their way of being able to steal some or enslave some. Oh, right on. Yeah, and that documentary was uh, A Nation's Right to Survive. <laughs> yeah. Ty, so you was about to say something? Someone was trying to uh, tell me that there was four, uh, they call it the four quadrants. I don't know what countries they are. They were like, there was like four countries in, in um, Africa that's not colonized. And I was like, where? So I don't know if y'all knew, like, like where's that at? You know? <laughs> and I just tried to Google it and they were like, is Liberia and Ethiopia? I'm like, uh, they were- Yeah, one of them was Wakanda. Was it condom? Wakanda. Oh, Wakanda. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it must have been, uh, Waka Wakanda and uh, Zamunda. Right, right. So I'm like, where y'all walking Wakanda. <laughs> 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 yeah. Okay. That, that's, that's the only country I know. Like, like, uh, <laughs> like, like, like Comrade Dex said, Wakanda and Zamunda, you know what I'm saying? Right, <laughs> they, right, they, right. They ain't been touched yet, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but you have to question that, because see, that, that came from Hollywood, so we have to question that that, that ability That's right cool. there. But yeah, I mean, you know, this is this is why again, African internationalism is so significant, and the chairman is so significant because I remember one of the first lectures that I heard from the chairman. One of the things he said, like, you ain't got to make shit up. You ain't got to you ain't got to make shit up on white people. Just tell the truth. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's all you got to do. But right. like, uh, uh, uh. Mechanic, mechanics and, and, and metaphysics and that type of thing, it can have you, you know, just going, just going all off in left field, you know, and saying, mm -hmm. you know, um, that Ethiopia hasn't been colonized, but I was in Ethiopia and I saw Santa Claus, you know what I'm saying? That was, that was, <laughs> that was problematic, you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. we gotta be able to uh, say that Africa has to be, Africa has to be free and that, you know, the whole of Africa is colonized. We don't have control over none of our resources on the continent of Africa. You know what I'm saying? And we have to be able to take the power to, to be able to uh, overturn that contradiction and that relationship that we have to colonialism. But people, you know, want to run with all type of metaphysical type of ideas or, you know, uh, uh, not really deal with things for what they are. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Mm -hmm. And and I think that's the contradiction how people come up with all these lofty ideas and and heroic in some ways, but you know not always true. Yeah, who rule? So was somebody else about to say something on that point before we move? I'm sorry, you should have corrected me. I said Venezuela, and I meant to say Nicaragua. I just looked at the documentary that you said. Okay, yeah, I thought you did say Nicaragua. That's what I thought you said. Oh, the making of something needs to, but yeah, that documentary was a, that that was a good documentary. Uh, uh, yeah, nation's right to survive, and that's the thing is, is being able to take the wool off people's eyes, and that's what we have a responsibility to do, and and tell things for what they are. You know what I'm saying, and not go along with this stuff, uh, not go along with what they're putting out. You know what I'm saying. So we're gonna go. Um, to question number four, what does this mean in relation to the objective condition of African people? What does this point mean in relation to the objective conditions of African people? Anybody? Yeah. 
Let me see. Because it okay. means we want to solve our problem. That's what it means. I mean, you know, we, <laughs> right on. Just for anybody else, we want to solve our own problem. Right on. Right on. Right on. And and I and I think that it, it, it's it's so important to understand the fourteen point platform because it shows intent. You know, it's not it's not spont it's not spontaneous. It's mm -hmm. not just uh, a knee jerk reaction and stuff. It shows that like we have an intent, we have an intention, we intend to govern, we intend to do for ourselves, we intend uh, to 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 uh, guarantee we free by our own hands. That's what our intention is. This ain't something that we just woke up one day or, or you know somebody hit us in the head with a rock and said, oh, I want to fight back. No, we saying this is our intent. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Whether whether it's peaceful time or whether it's it's it's, it's a time of of chaos. You know, we want we want we we want uh we want to we want to not only defend ourselves but prepare a future that's going to guarantee our children the future just like everybody else. Yeah. So any, anybody else before we move to point I mean question number 5. All right, so let's see, Comrade Sae, how do you see this reflected in the work of the African People's Social Party and the Ahu Movement campaigns, programs, and et cetera? Um, as you know, this African People's Socialist Party and Ahu Movement is um, addressing everything that we have talked about and giving organization to um, and, and for us to, to, to govern. As uh, Comrade Kundai had, has said, you know, earlier that, you know, there's nothing in this capitalist, colonial capitalist system that um, can be reformed. And so the African People's Socialist Party movement um, addresses that and exposes the um, system for what it is. But not only do we do that, um, we create campaigns to help empower and to um, equipped our, our community, the African people, um, to be able to uh, build dual contending power so we don't have we don't have to rely on the system. And so when we're ready to govern, the uh, party does that. So there's several campaigns that uh, we have and um, the Hulu movement with no one um, knows that there are mass organizations that are, un, you know, that are under the leadership of the African People's Socialist Party. For example, I'm a part of the African National Women's Organization um, and uh, we uh, bring African women into political life. And so through that process, uh, we have uh, one important campaign that we're working on right now that um, is really um, taking off is the REST CPS where we are addressing state sanctioned uh, kidnapping of African children um, through the CPS system. Um, and so we're addressing that. Another thing that we have is our economic development arm, which is the colonies where we um, are um, aiming to be you know, self-determined and to and hopefully one day to employ ourselves by selling natural beauty products with a, a political uh, lens. And then there's other um, uh, other mass organizations that, you know, if anyone's on any of those who they want to speak on those, but that's an example of um, how this work is reflected. Not only do we talk about what African internationalism is, and that's the beauty of African internationalism. It shows us who we are, where we are in, in, in this life, and also what we can do about it and what we want to be. So it, you know, so when we say Heru, we're talking about freedom. That's all we, that is our mantra, freedom, freedom, freedom. And it's, it's portrayed through the work of African People's Socialist Party that it's not just a slogan, it's not just a hashtag, it's not just, you know, us, you know, mad at the world, you know, just out here just with black, you know, black power fits that we're actually constructed and have receipts in the show that we have done this and where we're going. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Right on, right on, comrade. Anybody else? All right, so uh, yeah, I appreciate the way you broke that down, comrade. And uh, the next question is, how is this directly related to the work that you are involved in on the ground uh, today, comrade Dexter? Are you with me? You on mute. Dexter. Dexter, can you hear me? 
<laughs> Can you hear me, Dexter? One, two. Dexter, Dexter. All right. We're gonna, I don't know if Dexter. Who can people hear me? I can hear you now. Yeah. yeah that was, that was what's, the, what's the question? We number on number five? I, yeah, how is this directly related to the work that you are involved in on the ground? Oh, okay. Well, I'm a member of uh, the International Appeals Democratic Uhura Movement. Um, that's my, my primary work. And just some of the number of campaigns that are that impede them. Well, you know, Impedum's role is to, you know, intervene in different struggles that are going on in the in the African community and you know, really intervene and politicize those issues and kind of use those issues to bring African people back into political life. So uh, even you know that action, the purpose of Impedum right there is to bring people into this process where we are. Um, you know, taking uh, responsibility for our own liberation, um, really taking custody of the struggle that has been taken from us by, you know, the petty bourgeoisie, as, as we mentioned many times throughout this study, um, just really uh, beginning the process of undoing this, you know, U.S. imperialist intervention to the lives of African people. Oh, oh. Yeah, and I, I appreciate that, comrade. And I want to open this, this last discussion up for Anybody on the call, if you if you haven't said anything or you want to really, uh, you know, express yourself, how does a better understanding of this point, uh, point number twelve, help to advance the work that you're involved in, or or your even your understanding uh, campaigns or anything like that? How does this point help deepen your understanding of uh, you know what's going on and what has to be done? Anybody, everybody, screen. Uhuru. <laughs> Uhuru. Yeah, well, it, it helps with us going in different communities and helping our people. And uh, I'm Minister Help, so I go and check the people out, make sure they, they well from the coronavirus and everything, helping them out with clothing, helping them out with food, are uh, training them how to uh, protect themselves. Ahuru. Ahuru, right on, right on. Appreciate that. Prima, that's, that's powerful, that's powerful. Tyler Square, did you have anything? Ahuru, uh, comrade. Uh, I'm just uh, I'm I'm uniting with everything being said. I'm listening right now. I uh, can't really, can't really uh, participate. Uh, to a full extent right now in, in the, what I'm doing, but uh, I unite with everything being said, so I'm taking notes tonight. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. We want you to be safe on that road, man, like you driving. Yeah, right on, right on. All right, so, yeah, so we're going to uh, – anybody else before we move to the next portion of the PE? Oh, oh, oh. Well, comrades – this coming, this coming to uh, uh, the close of our first political education of 2022. You know what I'm saying? So I think this this gonna be. Uh, you know what I'm saying? We set it out. Yeah, Riverside hype down there. That's what's up. I love the energy. You know what I mean? So, but we gonna. This is the start of a great year off. You know, uh, uh, this our year. Imperialism is in crisis, and we have a responsibility to deepen that crisis. And, and some of the things that we want you to do, we definitely want, whether you are on Zoom or you're on a Facebook, is to go to the uh and, and, and get your burning spear uh, or get with somebody that's on his on his Zoom to get your burning spear. But this is taking, you know, some of these questions that we're raising in these points and putting it in the hands of the people. You equip the people with African internationalism, they'll be clear on the direction that they need to go. You know what I'm saying? And we really want to um, be able to also, um, you know, if anybody interested in joining the African People's Social Party or one of our mass organizations, you know, say so, let us know, you know, say it loud, you know, uh, I'm black and I'm proud, I'm, I'm ready to join one of the organizations. Uh, you can go to uh, APSP or who.org and uh, you can join, uh, uh, the Yahoo movement, you can join the party, you can join one of the mass organizations. And we also 
if somebody can put uh, the, the link to the plenary in the chat, we have in our African People's Socialist Party plenary uh, next month. <laughs> that time flying, man. It'll be next month. We'll be having uh, the African People's Social Party plenary is the third plenary of the seventh, seventh Congress. This is celebrating 50 years of the African People's Socialist Party. And never before in the history of our oppression have we had an organization to have 50 continual years of struggle. This has not happened in the history of our, of our uh, oppression. You know what I'm saying? That that most organizations that are really fighting for our liberation and for our freedom get crushed or get uh, uh, or people get murdered or, or, or jailed or have to go, you know, underground. But this is the first organization mm -hmm. that has had 50 mm -hmm. years of on the ground struggle. So yeah. we want you to be a part of this process and see some of the great work. Because when people talk about stuff like African people can't unify, look at the African People's Socialist Party and you mm -hmm. will see 50 years of continual efforts of African people unifying and organizing uh, for yeah. our liberation. So definitely check the plenary out, it's in the chat. And we also have a goal of raising $100 today uh, as we do every week uh, to, to forward this work for the African liberation struggle. And uh, today, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna start out with $25 to get us started. So that's only $75 that we got to go. So, you know, let's, let's make this happen. You know what I'm saying? Cause that, that, that used to be a saying to say, freedom ain't free. You know what I mean? We're gonna have to organize, mm -hmm. we're gonna have to organize ourselves to be able to raise the resources necessary for us to carry out our freedom. Mm -hmm. Cause if, if your colonizers are giving you, giving you money, nine times out of 10 or probably 10 times out of 10, it ain't for your freedom, you know what I'm saying? So we gotta we gotta raise our own money uh, to 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 fight for our liberation. And, and, and I always <laughs> go ahead. You said nine what? Nine out of ten is a payoff, so you won't struggle for your freedom. That's it. That's real talk. That's real talk. And I always raise up Garvey because Garvey, man, it, it just amazed me because when Garvey started the Black Star Line and, and stuff like that. It was Africans that that was that was poor that didn't have anything that right. donated ten cent mm -hmm. to the Garvey's to, to ten cent. You know what I'm saying? That that's saying that I have I have unity with with the 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 motion and the organization that you're a part of. I have the the unity to 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 give this ten cent uh to to this struggle, and we have to have that same type of you know uh, uh, fortitude. You know what I'm saying? Because if not, you know, we, we have with McDonald's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So we gotta be able to have with ourselves. You know what I mean? Uh so that that's Sai, I think with 15. Uh look like Dexter with 10. That's what's up, comrade. That's what's up. That's what's up. Comrade and Hindu. 20. 20. That's what's up. Yeah, right on, right on. And then, I mean, this is this is okay. vital. So this, yeah, this is why I appreciate you keeping up with the calculation too. That's seven, is it seventy now? No, yeah, I added a uh, river size five. That's sixty five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, how, okay, so we say we're at sixty five. Yeah, my math, my math was correct. You said 25 from you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 15 from Saeed. Yeah, that's and just to, just to reiterate what um, Comrade uh, Kobini was saying, you know, when we were talking about the, uh, you know, how, how the African People's Socialist Party addresses this, this point, you know, that we're a membership driven organization. Right. And when we're, you know, we have these campaigns and everything and that is done, you know, that, we want, we want to be self-determined. And this is an opportunity for us to demonstrate that self-determination by, you know, fortifying and investing in something that, uh, 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 something that is tangible, you know, something that we see movement with, you know? And so, you know, I would encourage you to um, do that. Many times, like, you know, I'm not saying don't donate to your faith or your churches and stuff, but you don't see the fruit of your labor. You don't, you know, that it goes into that, that, you'll, that the African People's Socialist Party 
um, you know, uses these resources to advance, you know, our, our agenda and, and advance our party. And, and so it's quite natural to go, you know, within, you know, African people, as you know, um, Cobain has said around, you know, Marcus Garvey, you know, mm -hmm. movement of Black Star Industries that, you know, that, you know, no amount is too small because it all is going towards something that's good and, and that we, you know, we demonstrate this in practice and is in African internationalism is a theory of practice. And that means, you know, with your, you know, your, 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 your skills, with your resources, you know, with, with, you know, just with your, and with your time. Uh -huh. Oh, right on, right on. And I, I got us at 75, um, and that's that's 25 to go. You know what I'm saying? I, I appreciate that intervention, Saeed, and, and it's right on, it's right on target. You know what I mean? So we're gonna raise that other 25, and I know it's some comrades that that didn't make the call today that that has uh, plans to donate as well. We just have to follow up with them and see the amount, but uh, we, at, we at 75, and I know we're gonna, for this particular side, I know we're gonna get uh, to the hundred. So I really appreciate everybody's contribution and to know that uh, no contribution is too big or too small. So we appreciate everything that everybody contribute because we, uh, you know, this is going towards, you know, us being able to fight for, for, our, for our liberation and, and, and we gotta fund our own liberation. So, you know, uh, if you're not a part of the party, if you're not a part of the movement, join. There's a lot of programs and, and we will be, you know, uh, Dexter, one thing I think we should do uh, along with some of the announcements that come from Amali taught me, we should share those and then like uh, in future in future studies and, and also we, we, we should uh, leave a little time for, you know, just showing like a, a flyer with, with a website of our mass organizations. Cause we talk about like in PDOM, ABDEP, ANWO, but really show people how they can, how they can navigate. Because I know, you know, even if it's 10, 11 people in the study, in the Zoom, it, uh, it's, it's, it might be 10 more on Facebook. But what I do know in between this, this study and next study, hundreds of people see it and they need to see, you know, uh, the mass organizations and, and, if they're not prepared to join the party, they could be prepared to join one of the mass organizations and want to win them to organization because organization is key and it's the only way we're going to get free. There's no way to defeat uh, organized enemy unless we organize force. So comrades, again, I appreciate it. Uh, 50 years, 2022 is the 50 year anniversary of the African People's Social Party. I appreciate everybody being here and let's be relentless in uh, organizing, relentless and continuing this struggle and relentless and giving the last blow to uh, uh, our, these colonial uh, forces along with their, colon their colonial puppets. So with that being said, comrades, Vanguard up. 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 Vanguard up.